Hello everybody. Today I'd like to give a little video walkthrough of our homestead, um, which basically consists of a 1935 rental farmhouse that we somehow found on Craigslist and that my girlfriend gets all the credit for decorating. It is just lovely. And uh, a rabbit tree and our small little poultry farm. So let's dive right in. Before we go outside, I gotta show off cotton. Our absolutely beautiful and sweet English Angora. She's the... Uh, She's the queen of the house. She gets her own little inside room in the pantry. And then we have our quail and our little chick brooder. And it looks like this little guy is about ready to go outside. So here's our little brooder, our brooder bench. You kind of just sit down and watch the little chicks. We got two silkies in there, six tuxedo jumbo uh, caternix, and one tuxedo caternix. Um, all right, let's go outside. Now the chickens are free range. I threw a little rice out here hoping they would all gather, but uh, they got to it before I got out here. Um, chickens and the ducks are free range. We let them out during the day and lock them up at night. They like to they like to find little cool spots under the house and under the porch during the day. Um, I guess they have some little damp spots they like to catch bugs in or just to cool down. There's a couple of the barred rocks right there. So these are our four Cayuga ducks. They got a lot of personality. Um, and those are our Khaki Campbell in the pool right there. It's just a little kiddie pool we dump out and fill up every day or two. Keeps them happy. And we'd love to give them an, a real pond, a, you know, an underground pond or in-ground pond, but I'm still working on the design for that. These are our rabbit hutches. Um, they're all Angora, different types, German, English, and uh, French, satin. Um, six of them are bonded, so we have three bonded pairs right there, and then the rest are single. Um, these are the outdoor hutches. They honestly were pretty time consuming and expensive to make, but they, they're a nice size and they're sturdy and they will last forever as long as I keep sealing them before the rainy season every year. Um, here on the end, we've got our pretty much full-grown quail. Um, there's only about five in there right now. We lost we lost half of them due to illness, but the day we got them on antibiotics, everybody got better. Um, but we'll probably have about 30 in this cage. They, they don't need much space. They actually love to just huddle together and they really don't do much, but huddle together and lay eggs. Um, so here we have the indoor bunny cages. Um, I think it's, my girl knows better than me, but I, I think it's the, the English that, that have the extra thick coats and they have to stay inside with the AC. Um, that's Opal, that's Maggie underneath there. We just had them together yesterday trying to get our first little batch of bunnies, little baby bunnies. Um, there's Miss Tittlemouse and Rue, and I forgot his name. This is Pete. She's a, she's a different sort of a hen. She's not antisocial, she's just kind of like the first one out, the more explorative one. She's always, always speaking in that inquisitive chicken talk. You can hear it, like, what's going on? What's over here? What's going on over here? Pete, come on, come on, Pete. And here's our run. Um, when we get new bunnies and we want to socialize them, we kind of put them all in the run, or just when we want to let them out and give them some air. Um, so that's the uh, indoor bunnies, the bunny run, and there's our new chicken house. You can see the ducks are hanging out together. Um, so, in we go. Kind of put up some some natural purchase for them so they feel at home but they really prefer that top shelf and um, here is the bonding cage for the little guys the little chicks to get to know the rest of the flock at close quarters before we throw them all in together and these two right here are kind of uh, kind of in between when everybody else goes out for the day we're, we're leaving them in there for a little while because they're a little smaller we're not sure if their homing beacon is as calibrated as it needs to be to stay safe around here because there are coyotes and 
we lost a few chickens at first out in the woods somewhere but since then um, it's been months and we haven't had any issues they really have a strong homing device the roosters are getting bigger and uh, more protective and um, you know we're hoping for good luck as far as that goes here's the new watering system it's just a four inch PVC pipe with the, with the uh, horizontal nipples um, they seem to work the best the drinking cups work really good for for chickens only but the ducks they just splash around and have dirt in their mouths and they're just so messy and love water so much they kind of just mess those drinking cups right up so these so far seem to be the best design they seem really really sturdy and um you know this this little system right here holds about 10 15 gallons even without a reservoir just in the pipe there so i'm pretty happy with that Here's our nesting boxes. They haven't started laying eggs yet, but they're right at the edge there. They're going to start laying soon. There is our Cayugas. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, go! All right. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, we got uh, ducks, chickens, and quail, and bunny rabbits. And uh, we're thinking, hopefully within the next year, we can start monetizing this somehow uh, probably mostly with breeding the angoras and um, you know all the eggs of course but that's not going to bring much because it's a small operation and then maybe breeding the right chicken or the right quail you know they go for fifteen dollars a a chick instead of you know two or three like uh, your average chickens do um, I was hoping to show off our brahmas because they are quite beautiful but they're hiding under the house so anyway that's all folks thanks for checking in